is Xi preparing for significant actions? Several ministers have recently disappeared. Japanese embassy in China received 400,000 abusive phone calls. ASEAN launches first ever joint military drills near disputed South China Sea. China denies banning iPhone, but experts say the ban has many purposes. Chinese officials give warnings after tornado wreaks havoc, killing five. Recently, there have been indications of instability at the highest levels of the Chinese military. International media sources reported the arrest of Chinese Minister of National Defense Li Shangfu, potentially linked to arms sales during his tenure at the Ministry of Equipment Development of the Central Military Commission from 2017 to 2022. The Military Discipline Inspection Commission is presently investigating this corruption case. The United States has even suggested that Li has been relieved of his duties and is preparing to hand over his role to a successor. Moreover, eight senior officials from the Equipment Development Department during Li's tenure are also under scrutiny. Simultaneously, Zhang Youxia, vice chairman of the Chinese Military Commission's non-attendance at key meetings, has raised eyebrows. According to Chinese state media, the first and second summary sessions on educational research and implementation, focused on Xi thought, took place in Beijing on September 15th. Although Hua Weidong, vice chairman of the Central Military Commission, and many other members participated, Zhang Youxia was conspicuously absent. On September 16th, commentator Li Mu Yang suggested that the predicament of Zhang Youxia may be even more severe than that of Defense Minister Li Shangfu. Zhang is reportedly under house arrest, and his family is under surveillance. Historian and professor Zhang Tianliang pointed out that Zhang Youxia was also conspicuously absent on numerous significant occasions, including the All-Army Party Building Conference from July 20th to the 21st. On May 29th, Zhang's absence from the Politburo's collective study session also raised suspicions of discord between he and Xi Jinping. Professor Zhang Tianliang noted that Xi and Zhang who share a compatriot background and a long-standing amicable relationship, have a history of collaboration. But on July 26th, when the announcement regarding the Arms and Military Equipment Procurement Information Network, which sought information on violations in arms sales and disciplinary matters since October 2017, Zhang Youxia resigned from his role as Minister of Equipment Development of the Central Military Commission which he handed over to Li Xiangfu. Zhang Tianliang analyzed that Xi Jinping relies significantly on Youxia, but may have differing views. Zhang Tianliang noted that Zhang Youxia and Li Xiangfu are the only two crown princes in the Chinese military, personally promoted by Xi himself. If they were to be dismissed, it could endanger the senior ranks of the CCP, leading to potential unity against Xi. Former Lieutenant Colonel of the Chinese Navy Yao Cheng remarked, CCP elders express dissatisfaction with Xi Jinping, which threatens his position. Consequently, Xi appears to be leveraging the case of Li Shangfu to challenge the party's crown princes. This could result in a fierce political storm. On September 16th, Akio Yaita, director of the Sankei Shinbun Taipei branch, suggested that Li Shangfu is under investigation due to concerns about his loyalty to Xi Jinping. This concern extends to Wei Fenghua as well. Yaita observed, It is exceedingly rare for a country's most critical foreign and defense ministers to be dismissed one after another within a few months. Perhaps an intense internal struggle is occurring within the CCP, a situation that has never previously unfolded. According to Japanese government sources, as of September 19th, since treated radioactive water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant was released into the sea in late August, the Japanese embassy in Beijing has received over 400,000 nuisance calls. Due to the growing anti-Japan sentiment in China, the daily number of abusive phone calls to the embassy peaked at more than 40,000 on August 25th, a day after the ocean discharge. Since then, this figure has stayed at around 10,000. 
The embassy has kept track of phone numbers linked to serious harassment, and has informed the Chinese public security authorities of these numbers. A Japanese government official said, We should never silently endure the harassment. According to the Japan Times, Tokyo has repeatedly asked Beijing to handle the calls, since they have interfered with embassy operations. Chinese laws stipulate that individuals who frequently make nuisance calls to disrupt other people's lives should be held accountable. However, the situation has yet to change. Beijing remains vehemently opposed to Tokyo's release of the treated water, calling it nuclear contaminated and asking for its immediate halt. The Chinese regime imposed a blanket import ban on Japanese fishery products in response to the water discharge. According to a report released by the International Atomic Energy Agency in July, the Fukushima Water Discharge Plan complies with international safety requirements. It will have a negligible effect on people and the environment. ASEAN countries on September 19th announced their first joint naval exercise in Indonesia's South Natuna Sea, aimed at countering China's maritime threat. Citing remarks by Indonesian military chief Admiral Yudo Margono, Reuters reported that non-combat drills, named ASEAN Solidarity Exercise, included joint maritime patrol operations, search and rescue operations, and humanitarian and disaster relief. All ten members of ASEAN, including prospective member East Timor, joined the five-day exercise. After the opening ceremony on the Indonesian island of Batam on September 19th, Margono told reporters, This is not a combat operation, because ASEAN is more focused on economics. The training is more about social activities. As the Taipei Times reported, when asked whether ASEAN was sending a stronger message against China's activities in the South China Sea, Margono replied, We have had a firm stance. He added that ASEAN nations have agreed to hold military drills annually. Besides, in the future, they would expand to include full war drills including the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The joint exercises were initially set to take place in the southernmost waters of the South China Sea, but were relocated due to the sensitivities of that location. Last month, Beijing released its 10 Dash Line map, which expanded its claims to cover about 90% of the South China Sea. This strategic maritime area sees more than $3 trillion in trade pass through it each year. Some nations, including the Philippines, Malaysia, Taiwan, and Vietnam, rejected China's map, saying it was baseless, while Malaysia also filed a related diplomatic protest. At a regular press conference on September 13th, reporters asked if the Chinese government banned its employees from using iPhones. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning replied that no laws, regulations, or documents prohibit purchasing and using foreign brand mobile phones like iPhones. However, China observers believe that the Chinese regime issued a word-of-mouth order banning government employees from using the phones, as many media outlets worldwide have reported in recent days. Chinese-Canadian writer Sheng Shui told Sound of Hope on September 13th that not recently, but a long time ago, the regime banned government employees from using iPhones. It did so to achieve two outcomes. First, because iPhones are highly secure, the CCP cannot wholly monitor government employees. So the regime wants these employees to use domestic phone brands to fall under its control. Second, banning iPhones is a way for the regime to reject Apple in the Chinese market and, at the same time, save domestic mobile phone brands such as Huawei. Law expert Lai Jianping also believes that the Chinese government's banning of iPhones is to help domestic phone brands like Huawei. In addition, it also wants to convey the message that it is not afraid to confront the West. According to Lai, China has joined the WTO, so the Chinese government cannot publicly prevent Apple from entering the mainland market. That's why it used word-of-mouth orders to ban the iPhone. Lai added that lower-level officials and people in China must use how their superiors act as an example. This, on one side, helps the CCP to comply with legal constraints, and, on the other, helps it achieve its regulatory purposes. Sheng Shui said that the initial obstacle to the Chinese government's iPhone ban is from people inside the CCP, who want to avoid being tracked by intelligence agencies. Lai believes civil servants in the Chinese government will equip themselves with an iPhone. They will use phones made in China in public, and iPhones in private. 
A violent tornado swept through the eastern province of Jiangsu, causing extensive destruction and killing five people on September 19th. The next day, Chinese weather officials issued warnings against heavy rain and strong winds in numerous areas. As reported by Reuters, the tornado hit a densely populated area of Suqian City in Jiangsu province at about 5.20 p.m. on September 19th, destroying 1,800 houses and damaging cropland and pig farms. Videos circulated online showed that although the tornado was brief, it was fierce. Cars were tossed around. Power lines were downed and set houses on fire, and it sent debris swirling high in the air. One user on Weibo wrote, I was at the door and witnessed the wind, solar energy devices, and trees flying in the air. He added, For those two minutes, I was dumbfounded. In addition to the five dead, four people were injured. In another video showing the aftermath of a tornado, people are lying on the ground amid chaotic scenes. Weather warnings were also issued for the southwestern region of Chongqing, Guizhou, southern Hunan, eastern Anhui, and central Hubei. Recent torrential rainstorms caused by the remnants of Typhoon Haikui battered China's southeast, forcing widespread evacuations, triggering landslides, and leaving fatalities in their aftermath.